Hi there, Dr. Davin Lim, Board Certified Laser Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about this vitamin A. This is the most commonly requested question which I've got asked on YouTube over the last few weeks. Can we talk more about retinols and retinoic acid? So here I am debunking some myths about um, retinoids. Today we'll be covering what retinoids are, what vitamin A is, the different types of vitamin A, how they work, what application they can be used for, and how to use them properly. Once again, guys, there's a lot of marketing out there, and um, I'm just trying to help you guys debunk some myths. So, vitamin A is time-tested. It's not one of those marketing things, it's actually time-tested in the form of retinoic acid to be proven to be a good anti-aging um, cream. It's been proven since the 1990s. But did you know it was all by accident? Um, vitamin A creams were developed for actually treating acne. That's right, treating acne. And how does it work for treating acne? Basically, decreases inflammation, decreases oil production, improves your keratinocytes, or basically your uh, cell turnover, and, um, and also kills P. acnes, which is the bacteria. Okay, so that's how it works for acne. And in the 1990s, when they were doing trials on patients um, with acne, they found that, hey, you know what? Putting this vitamin A for, for treating acne, suddenly their wrinkles started to reduce. And hence, um, the whole spawn of what you see now as the retinoid spawn, or vitamin A's retinoid retinoic acids. So what's the difference between a medical grade um, retinoic acid compared to a retinoid or retinol. First of all, retinols can easily be, be bought over the counter. So you can see every single um, industry or every single brand will have their form of retinol or retinoic acid. In most cases, it'll be a retinoic, um, or a retinol, sorry, because a retinol, it gets converted to retinoic acid. So in reality, retinol goes um, into your skin and gets absorbed and through an enzymic process gets converted uh, maybe five to ten percent to retinoic acid which is the active ingredient so companies like abaji aspect doctor um, all the big companies make them. neutrogena makes them uh, everyone makes them and they make them as retinol so they start off at 0 0.5 and go all the way up to some of them 2.0 okay now that is um, over the counter retinol that has to be converted. So what does retinoic acid do? Retinoic acid does four main things and we call it the four P's. Okay, number one, it reduces uh, pimples. Number two, it reduces pore sizing. Number three, it can reduce pigmentation. Um, and number four, powerful anti-aging. And how that works is not only by exfoliation of your skin, but by stimulating collagen. So, now we go to the medical grade um, retinoids. Now the medical grade retinoids um, are retinoic acid and it's usually tretinoin. So, tretinoin comes in different types. You can see uh, Stevole or Retrieve is the most fa famous one. And these are first generation. So the first generation ones were invented in the 1990s. Do they still work? Absolutely. Uh, and they go up in concentration starting from anything from 0 0.025% uh, all the way up to compounded 2 to 4%, okay? Um, so that's first generation. Second generation include Differin. So Differin is actually marketed as a anti-acne retinoid. Does it work for anti-aging? Yes, it does. What's the advantage of first generation compared to second generation? Basically, less irritation. So in theory, different causes less irritation. Now here's the paradox. Once you go up to third generation, which is basically your Zorac or Tazaratine, this gives you um, the best exfoliation, but conversely, it gives you the most amount of irritation. So instead of actually decreasing irritation, it increases irritation, but that's easily fixed because it's tight. we can titrate that. Okay, so that's how retinoids work. They work by actually stimulating collagen. They work by exfoliation. Um, what 
are the minuses. Well, number one, if a retinoid is going to work, it's going to cause some drying of your skin, okay? Because it exfoliates the top part of your skin. Uh, people say, hey, it makes the skin thinner. No, that is a rumor. It actually makes the skin thicker. What it makes is a stratum corneum, or the upper part of your skin thinner. That's why when you're on retinoids orally, for example, like um, Accutane, your skin is really thin, but it's not actually thin on the epidermis side, it's actually thin on the stratum corneum, which is the upper part of your skin. But it plumps up your collagen, and it plumps up um, your epidermis, so it makes it thicker, and hence less wrinkles. So that's how it works, by stimulating collagen production. The flip side is that if you stimulate collagen production, you also stimulate, unfortunately, blood cells. So that's why you get that retinoid glow. Um, so that's what we call retinoid dermatitis or retinoid glow. It's when it stimulates blood vessels and that's why uh, it can be a double-edged sword for patients who have sensitive skin, but also patients with rosacea. But the flip side is that it can help some patients with, with rosacea, but create more problems by generating more blood vessels and be irritant. So that's why it's a double-edged sword, guys. Now, how to use retinoids. This is super important. First of all, you use them at night, okay? Uh, and the best time, the best thing to do is actually use a moisturizer beforehand because that can reduce irritation. So moisturizer half an hour beforehand and then start off, don't start off with a prescription. Start off with the most powerful um, over-the-counter um, retinol that you can uh, get because that gets converted to retinoic acid. Once you tolerate the most powerful one, that's when you go to your GP or your general dermatologist. Um, in fact, just your physician will know. And then they can prescribe you, um, hopefully they can prescribe you, and hopefully they know what it means, uh, a first generation retinoid, because this causes less irritation. So start off with a uh, suitable concentration and go up from there. And then after that, you can start mixing your retinoids I do this. Uh, the reason behind it is logical. If, if, if you guys want to go into the real science of it, uh, retinoids bind on different receptors. They're called RAR, or retinoid um, activating receptors. And the different types, there's gamma, uh, beta, alpha, and all these different types of receptors. And they create um, uh, DNA transcription, and as a result, uh, provide collagen. So in the long, to cut it short, basically that's how it works. And by using different retinoids of different generations, you work on different RARs. Um, now, what do we do if we get irritation? Everyone who uses a retinoid at some stage will get irritation. Uh, for example, this is my formulation, but this is me. So you can see my name there. I think it says, yeah, there we go, Dr. Davin Lim. Okay, so that's me. This is a 1%. So we're not talking about 0.25, this is 1%. I've got a 2% sitting at home. If I put this on my face, will I get irritation? Absolutely. So what do I do for advanced um, techniques of pa patients with advanced, um, I guess, retinoid users? You can titrate. Basically, uh, you can have it made up to your skin color or skin base. In this case, almost color matches mine. So it's like almost like makeup and it goes in really, really well. So I can leave this on for a couple of hours maybe two hours, maybe four hours, or even overnight. Uh, for advanced users, you can use a Clarisonic first, and then actually um, uh, exfoliate prior, which means you're gonna get more retinoid, which means you're gonna get more of this active ingredient into your skin. The flip side is that you're gonna get peeling, and you're gonna get some irritation, and that's how you're gonna manage it. And how you're gonna manage it is to protect yourself from the sun the next day, uh, give yourself a good clean, just with a gentle cleanser the next morning, hat, sunscreen, and just a bland moisturizer. Now what happens for all of those people who go, look, you know, I've had retinoids in the past, I had a really bad irritation, my skin can't handle it, I've got super sensitive skin, super easy. You find yourself the lowest possible strength retinoid. What you do is you take that little bit of retinoid, just a tiny, tiniest, tiniest amount, a pea-sized amount or even less, right? And you mix it with a bland emollient or moisturizer. So you're basically mixing, right? And you're avoiding the areas such as around your eyes and the biggest mistake, right down here because you will get a rash. So for those of you who are ultra sensitive, you mix it into a compounded solution of your choice and then you can start off with a patch, test patch area first. So you might want to start off in this area and just leave it as that uh, overnight and see what happens using the weaker strength retinoid, right? And when you can tolerate that, you can use more 
And remember, start off two to three nights a week and then increase as tolerated, okay? And if you can tolerate that, you, you use less moisturizer and more retinoid. And over time, you will build up tolerance and over time, you will see the changes. The changes are very subtle, but the changes are there. So in this before and after photograph you'll see, it is changes that are very, very subtle, but you can see there's a difference in the pigmentation, there's a difference in the pore sizing, and there's a difference in the wrinkling. So remember, this is not the laser, guys. This is basically, what I call this, I tell all my patients, I tell this to everyone. It's like um, toothpaste, yeah? So when you go to a dentist, you get it clean in scale, like um, annually. Um, but in between, you use a retinoid, or in between, in a dental case, you use a toothpaste because that way it reduces plaque buildup. So it is a very cost effective way for your skincare because in Australia, I know in the US um, things like Zorak are super expensive, but in Australia, one tube like this, you're paying basically a dollar a week for skincare. I kid you not, because you use that little, and um, even with stuff like Steve Olay, you're real, realistically paying 50 cents a week for skincare. And um, seriously guys, over time, um, you'll start transitioning from your over-the-counter products to your uh, prescription products, okay? And um, they do form the basis of skincare. So I hope this video uh, basically covers everything you want to know about retinoids. Um, who can use them, who can't use them. There's two, in, well, there's a couple of contraindications. Pregnancy, so if you're pregnant, you can't use it. If you're um, lactating, you should not use it. Um, and if you've got ultra-sensitive skin, like if you have eczema, that is a relative contraindication. Start with a small amount and titrate upwards. You can always go backwards, guys, but not um, don't put a whole heap on because you get a bad experience. So, in summary, vitamin A, that is the basis of skincare apart from sunscreen. So if you're looking at active ingredients which actually work that are time tested and proven since the 1990s, that is where you start. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope to see you next week. Uh, I keep on saying I'm gonna do a laser video. I will, but I've got to let my face settle down because it's been eight weeks since my um, laser treatment. And I'll show you the before and afters because it does take eight weeks before collagen starts stimulating. So remember, even when you're using a retinoid, don't expect changes in a week, one, to one week, two weeks. Take a photograph, a baseline photograph, have a look at it three months later, and that's when you'll notice the changes. Guys, thanks once again. I'll see you next week. Remember, please subscribe if you like this. I will give you one, hopefully, educational, possibly entertaining video every um, Saturday morning, Brisbane time. Catch you next week. Bye. Ah, uh, shucks. Since I'm doing this video and I've got retinoids in my face, I'm just going to do my monthly retinoic acid peel. Uh, I know I'm going to be peeling. I'll be right by next week for consulting. But no sun for me over the weekend. Um, it's lots of hats and sunscreen and lots of moisturizer, so... Retinoids. Bye.